and welcome to St. Anne's Episcopal Church. I'm Jenny, I'm the rector of St. Anne's, and it is my joy to welcome the body and the church of St. Anne's together on this Sunday morning. I'm gonna flip on over to our bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and to you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Before we do the call, I'm just going to ask that if you have, if you unmuted yourself, if you will mute yourself, that would be helpful so that we don't hear the computer things or the background noise of your phone. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into the order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and very changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, you promise us peace that passes all understanding. Give us the courage and the creativity to see your peace as an attainable reality for all the world. As we pause, help us to visualize your peace and end violence of thought, word, and action, in religion, in government, in business, in our streets, our schools, our churches, our homes, and ourselves. Let us pray. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Martha, let me make sure I have unmuted you. A reading from the video. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read together in unison Psalm 130. 
Out of the depths have I called you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note that was done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for the Lord, in his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, with him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Lauren, can you unmute yourself? Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. 
When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, Martha tells Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, Mary tells Jesus too. There have been moments lately when we have felt this way. Lord, if you had been here, maybe thousands of people around the globe would not have died. Jobs would not have been lost. People would not be isolated. Uncertainty would not be the norm. Fear would not be everywhere. Mary and Martha had sent a message to Jesus about Lazarus. Their brother was ill. Jesus stayed two days longer where he was, though, before even beginning his journey to see his friends. Then Lazarus died. Their normal world was gone. Jesus did not arrive until four days after Lazarus' death. In the midst of social distancing, it's easy for me to slip towards spiritual distancing as well. Dwell on the Lord if you had been here. Remain stuck in those seemingly endless days of ambiguity before Jesus arrived. Convince myself we'll never leave Lent. Focus on the sense of absence. Friends and family that are far away, classmates, that are scattered around the region, in-person work meetings that are no longer possible, the exuberant St. Anne's sharing the peace, hugs and handshakes that can't occur. We wonder where is God in the midst of this? We plead together with the psalmist, how long, O oh Lord, how long will you forget us forever? And yet, one beautiful refrain continues to echo. All things shall be well. The words of Julian of Norwich, a revered saint, have touched me lately. 
in the midst of this uncertainty and brokenness, all things shall be well. A theologian and mystic, Julian lived an isolated life in 14th century England. War, division, and death were intimately familiar to her. The Black Death was part of daily life in Norwich. She saw death as a result of the plague all around her. She experienced despair. And yet, she knew the good news of resurrection hope through her connection with God. Julian famously writes, and thus our good Lord answered all the questions and doubts I could put forward saying most comfortingly as follows, I will make all things well, I shall make all things well, I may make all things well, and I can make all things well, and you shall see for yourself that all things shall be well. In our gospel text, Martha also embraces the resurrection hope of all things shall be well. After Martha says to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. She adds, but even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. In the midst of death and uncertainty beyond what she can fully rationalize, she maintains that God continues to provide, that there is a broader narrative of our partnership in God's healing work in our world. Jesus tells Martha that Lazarus will rise again. Martha agrees, stating, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. This statement embraces her Jewish community's belief about resurrection. However, this is not the only type of resurrection Jesus is referring to. He tells Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Beloved New Testament scholar Gail O'Day explains that the victory over death that resurrection represents is available in the present moment in the person of Jesus, not some distant future. Even in the midst of wilderness, death, and uncertainty, resurrection hope still prevails. Easter is coming. Jesus asks Martha if she believes this. Does she believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Martha responds with a confession of faith in traditional language. Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. But Jesus is nudging Martha and us further toward a radical new life offered by Jesus. O'Day explains the passage this way. Martha embodies the central questions of this gospel. Will the faithful continue to contain Jesus within their own predetermined categories, however well-intentioned those categories may be? Or will believers allow Jesus to shatter those categories and offer them the radical fullness of his grace? Or will believers allow Jesus to shatter those categories and offer them the radical fullness of his grace? Many conventional categories in our lives feel shattered right now. How we work, how we learn, how we engage with others, how we worship together. Are there preconceived notions that we have placed around God that need to be shattered too? Or shifted around our manifestations of worship? our expectations of how we receive God's grace, of how we live into beloved community, of how we minister with others. In this season, can we allow Jesus to broaden our imagination for how we receive that radical fullness of his grace? Today, we are worshiping together online and will soon shift toward Holy Communion. I would love for us all to be in the church receiving the life-giving body and blood of Christ in person. I yearn for that. However, our notions of normal have needed to change. Today, in the midst of the celebration of the Eucharist, even though we are in separate spaces, all are part of this feast. The Eucharist transcends both time and space. 
we participate in this holy mystery together, all of us, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven. Just as Jesus spans the gap from death to life with Lazarus, so the gap between what is and what we hope for disappears in this moment. Jesus continues to offer his loving and hope-filled grace to all the world. Jesus is present. We are transformed and can go in peace to love and serve the Lord. When it feels as though social distancing has led to spiritual distancing, Jesus offers his presence. In those moments of where is God in the midst of this, of crying out along with the psalmist, how long, O Lord, how long will you forget us forever? Know that Jesus continues to be present with us. Our gospel gives us an example of how Jesus shatters our categories and offers the fullness of his grace. Martha is expecting a resurrection of all at the last day, but instead, Jesus offers transformation in the present moment. He shouts in a loud voice towards Lazarus's tomb, Lazarus, come out. The dead man comes out and Jesus tells the people to unbind him and let him go. Are we open to receiving grace in ways we do not expect at times when we do not expect it? Jesus tells us, I am the resurrection and the life. We can continue to receive that resurrection hope in the midst of this season. Julian of Norwich offers us a vision for how that may occur. She describes God showing her a little round thing in the palm of her hand, a hazelnut. She looked at it with her mind's eye and thought, what can this be? The answer came to her. It is all that is made, all of God's love, all of creation is present for Julian in that hazelnut. All of creation, all of God's love is present for Julian in that hazelnut. Are there hazelnuts in your life? Small moments, places, or people that remind you of God's love for you and God's love for the world that offer resurrection hope in the midst of uncertainty and fear, moments that show you the radical fullness of God's grace, that assure you that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. May we notice these moments, receive them, cherish them, and share them with others, fully embracing the love of God. All things shall be well. Amen. Let us say together the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God, from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshipped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. At this time, as we begin to read the prayers of the people together, 
if you would like to offer up a petition, thanksgiving, a prayer request, an intercession, please do so in the chat. And at the end of this, I'll go back through and read all of those aloud. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for Lizanne's mom, Sandy Paling, who is going through chemo. We pray for all the providers in New York City. We pray for all who have lost their jobs, who are unsure whether they will lose their jobs. We pray for Brooke Davis's dear friend, Bill, who passed away. We offer up thanksgiving for Sarah's sister, Nancy's recovery from COVID-19. We pray for Addison's dear friend, Mickey, who died last week. We pray for Daryl and Shannon's friend, David. He works at the funeral home here in Winston-Salem and is knowing that the wave has yet to hit. We pray for Keith Esposito's, uh, we pray for the family of Michelini, the Michelini family, for those battling COVID-19 and, and their health. And as and we also pray for the health of our healthcare providers. We pray for Roddy's daughter, Glenna, who is a senior at Western Washington University, about 90 minutes north of Seattle where COVID-19 is pretty intense. We pray for Brooke's friend, Andy, who is in the hospital with COVID-19. We pray for all students during this uncertain time. We pray for all physicians and all in healthcare, especially for Susan's children, Harry and Laura. We pray for Daryl and Sharon's family back in New Orleans. They are safe at this time. We pray for Cindy's mother, Kathy, who has had to delay radiation treatments for breast cancer due to COVID-19. We pray for Alvi's sister, Amy, and her family as they grieve the loss of her mother who passed away on Friday. May she be eternal rest and peace. We pray for Jason's sister-in-law who will be working with COVID-19 patients with little to no protective equipment. We pray for Rochelle who had to put her husband in hospice. We offer prayers for baby William's lungs and his parents, Casey and Nolan. We pray for Molly his husband Scott died last week. We pray for Michelle, Danny, and Janet who were exposed to the virus. We pray for Linda who lost her cousin to the virus. Daria's daughter who may have the virus. 
for the caregivers taking care of seniors in our community. We pray for all those who are scared they will not survive if they come down with COVID-19. We pray for health care. We pray for Heather who returned to work as a nurse. We pray for lupus patients and our struggle to receive our medication during this crisis. We pray for all who are working other essential services that they may start healthy, that they may stay healthy and respected for their contributions to the safety of others. We offer up prayers of gratitude for those making masks for health care givers. We pray for the Lutheran pastor, the Reverend Chris Ross whose husband has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Pray in thanksgiving for the life of the Reverend William Barnwell, who died as a result of COVID-19. Are there any other prayers the body of St. Anne's would like to offer? I want to read you some prayers that were offered by the Reverend Nadia Poles Weber. For the layers of comfort and convenience that surround our lives and that we never considered a blessing, but always took for granted, forgive us. For we who must grieve in isolation and not in community, comfort us. For we who care for the sick, protect us. For the ability to turn off the fear-mongering and unhelpful commentary and worst-case scenario clickbait, strengthen us. For the times when we are all out of creative ideas for how to get through this with cooped-up kids, inspire us. For we who are now cutting our own bangs at home, guide us. For the grace to allow ourselves and others to just be less productive, shower us. For the generosity needed from those who, of us who have more resources, empower us. From our own self selfish inclinations, deliver us. For just being your children, none of whom have done a global pandemic before, love us. For the days ahead, accompany us. God, unbound by time, help us to know that you are already present in the future we are fearing. Amen. We offer up prayers for the entire St. Anne's congregation. We offer up prayers for our Reverend Jenny Wilder. We offer up prayers for college students who are quarantined at the university in their dorm rooms by themselves. We offer up thanksgiving for the gifts of humor, laughter, and creativity to help us through. We pray for those whose medical appointments have been deemed non-essential and who worry what this will mean for their health. Lord, we know that when two or three are gathered together in your name, that you hear the prayers of your children. Hear these prayers, Lord, and hold them in the hollow of your hand. Comfort us and bring us into that understanding that your peace knows no bounds. Let us pray for our own, uh, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. 
that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. So with you. I'm gonna unmute everybody. Peace, my friends. Peace, Eric. Peace, Martha. Peace, David. Stephanie. Good to see you all. Be with you. Be with you. Love and miss all you guys. Karen, I have not. you. Good. Peace be with you. Okay. Pretty good technology there. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. Good to see you all. So good to see everybody. Wonderful to see everybody. To see everyone. Be with you. We've got quite a group here. Love you all. Dogs are attending too. <laughs> Saw Martha's tail, her cat's tail. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Even virtual peace is a little bit too much for my introverted wife. <laughs> 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 Lucy, Lucy, I hope you saw the story behind Jimmy. Can you see it, Lucy? Yeah. 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 Thank you for that. It's wonderful to see everyone smiling now. Yeah. Yes. How could we not? Oh, I've seen her, but I don't know why they keep going back to him. He's not saying anything. <laughs> Um, you want a ride, Wendy? <laughs> right afterwards. Peace. <laughs> I'm about to mute everybody. <laughs> Please remember that your pledge is important to St. Anne's and you can keep it uh, coming by mailing it to the church or by doing it online. Um, ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offerings and come into his courts. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own have heaven given you. The Lord be with you. So with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died and for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you. Join in our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever say this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets, you taught us a hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people the bread of life, and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And remember all those who have found their inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, and apostles, and martyrs, and with Anne, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in unison with them, and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, 
and with Christ and in Christ. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Jesus Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy food for holy people. My Jesus, since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those we travel with. So be quick to love and make haste to be kind, and rest assured that God is infinitely more concerned with the hope of our future than the sins of our past. And may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining our worship service today at St. Anne's Episcopal Church in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Just want to let you know that in the week to come, we will have our evening prayer service at 6 p.m. on Facebook Live on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And on Thursday at 8 p.m., we will have our Compline service again on Facebook Live. On Tuesday evening at 7.30, we'll do our ha Holy Happy Hour on Zoom, where we will study the scriptures and enjoy each other's company and whatever beverage of choice we choose to partake. We will be holding our Holy Week services uh, and uh, more, more to come about that. But thanks again for joining in on our worship service today. We look forward to seeing each other real soon. Thank you, everybody. It's great to see you. Thank you, everyone. Love you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Be safe. Bye.